Floss Tube. It's Mary, the Daydream Stitcher. Thank you for joining me. I'm really happy to have you um, here, whether you're new or returning. Um, it is July the 17th. I can't believe it. I meant to come the first week of July and time just got away from me. Um, I got really sick actually, and so I won't go too into that, but it wasn't COVID. I thought it was COVID it turned out to be a kidney infection. And um, so I got on some antibiotics and I'm feeling a lot better. So that's my excuse this month. Um, I have some things to show that I'm really excited about. And so I'm gonna get into it. But first, I'm actually gonna go ahead and do the giveaway winner from last video. I said that I was gonna do a Mindy Stitches gift card um, for $25 and I want to go ahead and do that and get that out of the way because like I, you know, yeah, I just, I worry that I'm not going to like somehow do it right. So I'm using the YouTube comment picker with the word with sunshine and it was in celebration of my sixth year on floss tube. So thank you for those who commented and celebrated with me and I have put it in. Hopefully I have the right link. We'll see. And I'm going to do get YouTube comments in real time here. And I do start. Yeah, I see. The weird thing was, ah, stitching Michaela. Is that the right? I hope that's the right um, word. I think it's Michaela. It's not Michael. I think it's Michaela. Okay. Uh, she has actually followed my channel from the very beginning. She was one of the first people and to comment and um, encourage me. And honestly. Thank you so much for all of that and for all of your comments. You all, you comment on almost all of my videos and so I'm really excited that you won the giveaway. Um, and her comment said, Hi Mary, congratulations on your Floss Tube anniversary. Your whips look beautiful. We had a lot of sunshine in the UK at the moment. And then she went on to tell me that Carolyn Mazio is on Instagram, which a couple people um, mentioned. And I appreciate that because I actually follow Carolyn on Instagram and I didn't connect the dots or if I had I forgot so anyway thank you for that back to the giveaway um, yeah I had 12 people enter and so yeah congratulations um, the best way to contact me is on Instagram daydream stitcher send me a message on there with your email and I will have that gift card from Lindy stitches sent out to you um, via email if not, you can send me, I'll put my email down below and you can email me or you can comment on one of my YouTube videos or comments or whatever. Anyway, we'll get together and we'll figure it out. So I'm really excited to do that. I love doing giveaways. And um, I am so close to 500 subscribers on this channel. So when that happens, if that happens, um, I will definitely do another, another giveaway. So if you have not subscribed yet, please subscribe below, like, and like they say, hit the bell button. Um, yeah, that that I've been on Insta, I've been on YouTube for six years, and I'm still figuring that out. So bear with me. I went to watch. I went to get the link for my old video, my last video, um, a little bit ago for the giveaway, and it played an ad before my video, and I just wanted to say that that's not me. I have not chosen to put any ads and I don't even think with my subscriber rate that, I mean, I know, I don't think, I don't get anything from YouTube. So I'm not doing this to make money and I definitely am not intentionally putting ads in my videos. I know YouTube recently mentioned that they can put an ad in any video now and they're making the money off of it. So um, I was just a little surprised because like normally when I watch a video and I see, you know, ads, I assume that that YouTube you know, person is getting some some kind of little revenue from that, which is fine. I have no problem with that, but um, I guess that's not always the case. I guess YouTube is just putting them in wherever. So um, good to know. Okay, I have finishes to show you guys. Finishes. I'm so excited because I so rarely have finishes. Um, so I got to show you. So here's my. Well, they're not fully finished, of course, but they're finished cross stitch. So here's my first one. It's called, it's a, well, I don't know what it's called, but it says it's a crabby day without a stitch to cross. And 
this actually, um, ooh, I just noticed I have like a countdown timer on my thing. So like I'm being, I'm being told I have, I'm going to be cut off. Um, this actually was a new start in June that I did for cross stitch camp that Colorado cross stitcher is doing. Um, I thought it would be fun to jump in. So I actually had a new start and a finish in the month of June, which is like unheard of for me. So I'm really excited about that. This is a Sue Hillis design. I'm going to put all the details down below. I've had a lot of people ask about this design on Instagram. Um, I actually got it from a Facebook live for Needleworkers Delight, which is probably my last purchase from them. That's a whole other story. But anyway, um, it's a Sue Hillis design and apparently it's hard to find. It doesn't have a title that I can tell, but it's PS183 is how it says and it's like Postmates or something like that. Um, but a couple people have told me they found it on her website. I went on her website and I didn't see it myself, but a number of people have found it there. So I probably just, you know, missed it. So if you are looking for this one, I recommend that you go to her website because I haven't found it in um, one, two, three or anywhere like that. So um, it is out there. It is available and it is still in print. So that's done and I'm going to do this as a hoop finish. I'm going to um, do the, you know, lace in the back and cut the fabric and everything. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. My next finish is an, a whip. I say old whips, but for me, like most of my whips, many of my whips are old whips that were started years ago. So um, I that's that term really doesn't mean a whole lot, I guess, in my in my whips. Um, but this one, yeah, it's a couple years old. This is Trick or Treat by Ursula Michaels. It is a, a mat. It's done published by Imaginating, designed by Ursula Michael. Um, it's known as Trick or Treat or Three Witches Hats. And I just, I fell in love with it because I love the colors. They're so bright and happy and all the little touches. Um, and I started this I think according to my Instagram, I started in January of 2017, which is not that big a piece, so no excuses, but I finally got it done and it's on 18 count Ada. It needs to be ironed and I'm hoping to do it as a pillow. I bought the backing fabric for it and I have not done that yet before. So we shall see. I am not a sewist. My daughter, my young daughter has a sewing machine and she took some classes, but, um, We'll see. It'll be a, a learning experience. So hopefully I can show that soon as a fully finished. And then my big finish in July or June, rather, these were all in June. Um, oops, I knew that was going to happen. Oh, bear with me here. This is Garden Prelude Mirabilia. Let's see if I can get her all in the shot. There she is in all her glory. She is done on, I believe it's called Pink Sunset Beach, Lugana 32 count. Um, it is a fabric flare fabric, which I believe is only available through um, Extatory Express, I think is the name of it, Cindy Sorley. Um, I think she submits, apparently I just found this out, she submits pictures to the designers or the you know people who do fabric flare and they will put her her ideas on fabric. So I believe that that is what's going on here. I actually um, was not happy with this when I was stitching it. I'm sorry that the, I'm trying to like put the whole thing and I'm sorry about my dog. I might have to pause this. I've tried several times to film this. You know how that goes if you do any video kind of stuff. And it's like always something comes up. <clears throat> so, um, Anyway, I'm like so over these dogs right now. <sighs> the neighbors are out doing yard work. And so, of course, he's got to like let everybody know he knows. Um, <clears throat> so he, her dress is massive. This is my first Mira. What else can I say? I made some changes on the violin. Okay, so this is not good. <laughs> the reason this is like this is I did it differently than I just charted. And it will work out because when I frame it, I'm going to pull it tight. It is not anchored fully. So like if I pull it like this, let's see if I can pull it. 
down and I pull it like this. I should <laughs> straighten out. Um, yeah, I might have to I might have to anchor it a little bit with some couching or something. But I didn't really like how it was charted to be honest. It was in a stepping like a very square, very step pattern and I felt like it just didn't look like a bow to me. Also, I changed and I know it looks ridiculous right now, but I promise that like I'm going to fix it like when I frame it. So, it'll be it'll be okay. Um and I used a full six strands on the bow and I did do some couching and anchor it, but clearly like when the fabric is loose, that you know, there's a lot of give there. Um I also changed the scroll of the violin to come up a little bit more because in the picture honestly I felt like it looked like it was sort of just like falling off and collapsing which somehow caused her hand to be up a little bit higher but that's fine because I just figure she's playing in third position um, I used to be a string player so um, it's yeah it's fun to like uh, try on different little you know the little pieces and stuff also it was weird because the strings also were kind of not going over the fingerboard so I anyway I just made some little changes here and there but other than that everything else is as charted it's all BMC and I didn't do their flowers charted in archway which is really pretty but I chose not to do that on the beach so that's my big finish of the summer she was started I think in August of 2019 which I think is when she came out I saw her and had to start her right away because of we are a family of musicians well my kids and I are and we play music and we're string players and my daughter actually just started flute but my son and I are string players so that was fun okay whips I tried to get everything here and now I'm gonna be like turning away and like figuring all this out and just flying by the seat of my pants so I am sorry I'm just gonna show them as I pull them up I'm trying to show the, the pictures as I can on my before I show because that's something that I often appreciate there goes everything on the floor so yeah um here is stargazer another Mira that I started at the beginning of this year I say start loosely it was a very very small start I was stitching this along with Stephanie of Miss Oh So Crafty here on Floss Tube and her friend Angie which I asked her if she had a floss tube and she said yes but I didn't get any more details or I think or she used to so I'm not sure what her um, YouTube name is so I actually put a lot into her in the last week I had a very little bit just starting in the middle and um so I got more. She's tricky because she has so many beads. So like a lot of the empty spots there, those swirls, those are going to be beads. So it's um, it's a little tricky because I have to. I keep checking back. Like did I miss this these stitches or? Um, and I don't typically mark my chart, so I may have to mark this one, highlight it so that I'm sure that I'm not like, you know, I'm probably going to miss stitches, and then when I'm beading it, I'm going to find that. This is done on Whimsical Winter from Under the Sea Fabrics, which is a beautiful piece. I had started on a dark piece that I'd always envisioned this on, on Gothic from Picture This Plus, which is a beautiful fabric. But I was having trouble with these dark grays showing up on it, and I just wasn't happy with the way that it wasn't showing up. But I have seen others stitch, um, you know, others have stitched her on dark fabric. Stephanie, in fact, is stitching her on a dark blue that's very pretty um, and I've seen a couple other floss tubers stitch her on dark and they made it work I think they probably converted some of the you know flosses but anyway I think she'll be fine I think she'll turn out okay so but you know those mirror dresses are massive so I have a long way to go on this but I'm happy that I could put a few stitches in it's been a little embarrassing because you know Stephanie is just like the stitch queen and she's like just stitching along at like 
ridiculous speed. She's almost done with it. I think actually she might be done with it and just have the beading left. Um, so it's like, I don't even show my, like, yeah, I got like a couple more stitches in. Like, yeah, I don't even show usually what I've done or not done. Um, oops, pardon me for this. <laughs> I'm a mess. What can I tell you? Nothing new. Okay. Halloween stitching. I worked on, besides finishing <coughs> Trick or Treat, I worked on this Halloween night, which is also an imaginating pattern. And it is designed, the designer is Sandra Cosolino. So I put a few more stitches into this. And this is done on Gold Rush from Be Stitch Me. It's a 32 count Jobelin. And there goes my stuff again. You know, before I became the Daydream Stitcher, I was the Disorganized Stitcher. I probably should have just kept that name. Okay, I will get I will get it together one of these days. So I promise I will. I also worked a little bit on my Halloween Quaker, but I don't even know if it's worth showing because honestly, I only worked a little bit on the ghost. There's really not that much to show. But um I have been trying to work on some Halloween things for the spooky summer stitch hashtag on Instagram, which I will talk about a little bit more in a minute. Um, if you are still with me at this point, bless you, because yeah, it's like, this is ridiculous. This is not. Um, thank you for sticking in there. Every video, I'm like, I'm going to do better next time. I'm going to be more with it. Like, I'm going to have my stuff together. I promise you, like. Yeah, I don't know. Like everything just sort of like falls apart when I do my floss tube, but it's okay. It's all right. Here's my log dog. Death by cross stitch. I can't remember if I said this last time, but I'm figuring out that like when the designer Jules named this thing death by cross stitch, she wasn't joking around. <laughs> this thing might be the death of me. Oh. Um, I seriously love it. I love it, love it, love it, love it. I, when I get going on this thing, I don't want to stop. It's just gorgeous. The pad, the way that the patterns play together, um, all the light and the dark. Oh, I just, I can't even like say how much I love it. I just love it. I'm so glad I found this designer and this style and, um, yeah, thank you, FlossTube, and Instagram, and Facebook, and all. Facebook? I promise I haven't been drinking. I had, I have not had a drink, okay? So, like, please excuse me. It's been a summer. Um, this I just put in, this is my initial M, and then my last name will go here, my last initial will go here. I played around with this for a while trying to fit this thing in. I'm not happy with how far over it ended up, but what's weird is the letters that are given to fit here, which I think are meant to fit there, they don't fit, or at least the M doesn't fit. So I had to play around with it and um, I tried a couple things and I came up with this. Part of the issue with it is that if you this floss, I, when I frogged it before, it tends to kind of stain this white fabric and you can see um, it's just off color. So I didn't really want to put stuff in that I was going to have to pull out on purpose. So I sort of just graphed it out and I don't know, like this is still what came out. So I'll probably put another little, one of these little crosses or stars here to fill out. This also is not complete. So once I complete that thing, um, that star, that might help too. So I will be relieved when this square is finished with the initials and the dragons and everything. And I can just focus on these beautiful things happening. I have had so many miscounts in this already. It's disgusting, but it's worked out. So one reason I've gotten so much done on this in the last few weeks is because I keep thinking 
okay, there's going to be a major problem with things matching up and I want to find it because it's bugging me. It's making me anxious. So I was working on it feverish, feverishly, like literally I was feverish because I had a kidney infection. But anyway, um, I was working on it like that because I was trying to find out where that was and where it wasn't going to line up. Like I thought I got up here and it wasn't going to line up and it's lined up. Now it is off by a stitch. There is an extra something. I mean, an extra space going on. But you know what? Nobody's going to know that and I'm probably going to forget it eventually um, unless I watch this back later. So I'm okay with it as long as you can't tell. Now, when I go to put in the side panels, will it haunt me? Probably. I'm sure I'm going to pay for it somewhere. But the good news is that it's gotten me to do a lot on it. It's gotten me to put a lot of work into it. Um, and I'm really happy with that. And I actually have to talk myself out of stitching on it constantly because there's other things I want to get stitches into. And this month, so far, I've just been stitch all the things, um, literally, like changing projects, even the same day, which is kind of unusual for me. Um, so I don't know what's going on with me, but um, yeah. So I've been stitching all the things, which means minimal progress on you know, any one of the things. And then what's um, currently on my Q-Snap is my, this is called a Gentle Needle. And this is by Monticello Stitches, Monticello Stitches. I always want to say Monticello because of, you know, cello. I guess it's Monticello Stitches. Um, this is not my normal type of design. I have never stitched anything remotely close to this. I've never stitched a sampler or a vintage prim piece, never done it. Um, but I really... So this is my cross stitch camp piece for this month of July, which was to stitch, I know what it is, but I hope I say it right. I think it was to stitch a new designer to you. And Monticello Stitches, um, she has the ha such happy piece designs with such great messages on them. And I thought, I just got to do a couple of hers. She also has the one about never put your the keys to your happiness in someone else's pocket, which I really need that too. I need to stitch that one too. Um, so this is my one that I'm supposed to start and finish. I'm not sure, honestly, that I'm going to finish this by the end of July. There's still a lot to do, but it is enjoyable when I'm stitching on it. And I'm doing it on this MCG Textiles Even Weave 28 count that I pulled out of my stash from many years ago. I think I bought it at Joann's actually many years ago. It's an interesting fabric because it's very heavy. It reminds me of when I was a kid and we, my grandmother had us learn embroidery. The fabric that we learned embroidery was on was a very heavy kind of vintagey style type of fabric. I don't know exactly what it was. But it was very much like this, what I think of as embroidery fabric. So that's been interesting. It's very easy to stitch on. It's easy to count. Um, stitch and Mommy, Sarah at Stitch and Mommy recently mentioned she was doing a piece on an MCG textiles even weave. And so I was asking her about it. She said it was actually quite easy to frame it and it was good. So, and it actually turned out to be the perfect um, fabric for this piece because it has this vintagey look. Um, it just really, it vibes with the whole look. It's kind of, you can't see it, but it kind of has that, um, what do they call it? Like Fiddler's Ada oatmeal look where it has like some darker spots in certain places. And I mean, it's not dyed, but, um, just the weave or whatever. So I really like it. I actually had ordered some cream linen for this piece and then I couldn't find it when I was ready to start it, of course. So I grabbed this and it ended up, you know, just being the right thing. So I love how that comes together. So, and it, the piece is charted as a gentle needle soothes the restless heart. But in one of her videos, 
um, Jean, the designer, had mentioned she should have done the anxious heart. And I thought, oh, that's what I need to do is the anxious heart. Um, because, you know, cross stitch really helps me with my anxiety. So I, when I bought the pattern, I emailed her and asked her, hey, can you send me the alphabet so that I can like figure out anxious? And she sent me the actual like quote already charted, which is amazing and awesome. Those are my whips for this month since my last video, which that brings me to wanting to do the, my, a couple of shout outs. I'll start with Jean because, um, she is the designer behind Monticello stitches and I'm amazed that she doesn't have more viewers. She's on floss tube. If you haven't seen her, please go check her out because she has such a light about her. She has such an aura. Oh, she's just one of those people that just makes you just feel even through the screen, like just, ah, like just very, you know, warm and peaceful and just somebody I'd really like to hang out with sometime. Um, and that's really what drew me to her more than anything was that, well, I saw, I saw her designs first, I guess, in, in uh, the needlework, what was that called when they did the, ga not gallery, but you know, the virtual event they did last year. Anyway, that was uh, the draw. And then I saw her, I found her on floss tube and she's just such a, such a great spirit. So I really appreciate her designs and I really want to tell you guys that I would love for you to one, go subscribe to her and two, if anybody wants to stitch her designs, because I looked her on Instagram, I don't see people posting things on Instagram that they're stitching her designs. And I would love to have some people stitching her designs with me. And so I made a hashtag on Instagram if anybody's interested, just Monticello Sal. Or is it Monticello Stitch Sal? I guess I should know my own hashtag. I believe it's Monticello Stitches Sal. Um, so please, like, if you want to stitch one of her designs, she's on Etsy. And she also sells her patterns through the shop. So if your local shop has it, 123 Stitch has some of her patterns. Um, just go, go please, like, get one of her patterns and start it and let me know. And we'll stitch it together and we'll, like, push each other on to get it done. Um, it's just, yeah, it's, I, I feel like her light and her personality is conveyed through her, through her design. So, and having lost two, I guess, giants recently in the cross stitch community in the last few weeks, um, even though Jean is a new designer, I just like, I really feel like it's so important that we focus on support I mean I know we do this is I'm not pre I'm preaching to the choir I know but like just appreciating who's here and what they do for us and the time and work that they put in to these designs that we enjoy so much um I don't think that I have mentioned on my floss tube one of my favorite floss tubers which I can't believe I haven't maybe I did but Nadine Nads X stitch and I will tag I will put the down the link down below. She's a great floss tuber that I have been watching for months and she's very prolific. She does lots of beautiful things and she does mirrors. She just finished a huge mirabilia. So check her out. She's based in the UK. Um, I also wanted to mention Beth, the desert stitcher. I just recently found her. And she's amazing. She is so sweet. I just, she's another one that I just, I'm like, oh, like I love her personality. She's very gentle and soft spoken. And she also stitches. She has a lot of whips. And she, pretty much like every single one of them, I'm like, yeah, that's on my list. Yeah, that's on my list. Yeah, that's on my list. And she's stitching some really beautiful things. And there's a lot of variety in what she shows. And I believe she's based in Arizona, out west somewhere in the desert, obviously. So she's another one. And then the last one I'm going to mention um, doesn't, I mean, nobody needs me, my help. But I love to, like, mention people that I'm watching a lot of. And um, I'm sure anybody watching probably already knows 
open this new channel, but Chris Cross Stitch. Oh my gosh, you guys. Like, is he a miracle or what? I am so excited that this guy has joined FlossTube. He is so much fun. I tune into him weekly like I used to tune in to my favorite shows when I was a teenager. Um, I get so excited. Oh, it's Tuesday. It's time for Chris Cross Stitch. Um, if he were doing them daily, I would be right there. So he's just so much fun. His format is different than a lot of floss tube. Um, he's funny, he's engaging and appreciative and um, just really like such an asset to floss tube. There's so many floss tubers, as you all know, popping up. Lots of people giving it a try, which is awesome. Like I said, I started my first video six, six and a half years ago and it's just so fun to see how much this has grown and it's impossible really to keep up with and everybody, um, even all the people that you like, you know, you just get, so you have to kind of like run through them and like, you know, hey, I, you know, I noticed this or whatever. Um, so those are my shout outs and my must see TV, I guess, because like Wastube is our TV now for a lot of us. I know for me it is. Sometimes I go to put something on TV or even a movie and I'm like, no, I gotta, I'm gonna put on Wastube. I'd much rather be enabled on Wastube. So that's it for me. Um, and I, speaking of Wastube videos, thank you for watching me. I know like there's so many to choose from and I know I am a mess. And uh, the fact that you watched me, I greatly appreciate it. If you do decide to take a chance and subscribe, I will do another giveaway when I hit the 500 mark. I'm only a couple people away from there, so this shouldn't take too much. Hopefully uh, we can get there by next video and uh, do something fun for that. If you have any ideas about what we should do for the next giveaway, let me know because I'm always looking for new ideas for that. And, uh, oh, I had haul to show. I only have a little bit of haul. Really quick. Okay, I promise. I picked up Amanda May, Art of Design. I had to get her kit for her... It's a series, I think. This is the first of the series, Chesapeake Bay Treasures, number one. Marilyn Blue Crab. I'm hoping I don't miss the next ones. I just happened to catch her video where she had just posted about this kit and grabbed it. And it was sold out, like, I think within an hour or two. So I was happy to have it. It's a whole, it's to make a little pillow. She included the fabric, the backing fabric, and the floss, the variegated floss. So Art of Design, for sure. Check her out. She is so fun. Like, you just smile through her whole video. Like, the love, her love and happiness is just, she radiates um, happiness. And I, I love it. And then I picked up the Cross Stitch Fun pattern. This was my favorite pattern from, I want to say Needlework Expo, but I don't feel like that's the right thing. You know what I'm talking about. The thing instead of Nashville, the virtual, yeah, the new releases last spring. Okay, so <laughs> this was my favorite, and I saw, it was one of those, like, put in the pile for a long time away, and then I saw that a couple people on Floss Tube. Colette the Highway Stitcher, key, is it key st Keystone Stitcher that's new to me, and then Stitch and Mommy, Sarah, we're all stitching this together. So I'm like, oh, I gotta kit it up and get it. So I kitted it up, I have everything I need for it. I haven't started it yet, but Cross Stitch Fun, it's huge. It is lots of different fun little patterns, and the cat and the treble clef are what stuck out to me. And I'm sure I will see way more stuff as I you know, once I start it and as I go. But once again, when I'm stitching along on a sow or with other stitchers, or like jump on to their, you know, caboose and be like, can I do it too? And like, I do that all the time. And then I'm like, so far behind, it's ridiculous. I'm not really stitching it with them. I'm just sort of like stitching it after them. But at some point I'll get to that. I already have enough whips and getting those finishes in was like such a high. So I'm looking forward to getting a few more finishes in. I'm not sure yet what those will be this year, but I'm going to get a few more. So thank you again. 
I'll see you guys next month at some point.